So, hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture. So, in this lecture I am going to conclude the buck boost converter, converter series and I will later be con continuing with another DC to DC converter next week. But anyway, this is where I left off where I had simulated and analyzed some of the waveforms. So, before before we start with this lecture as always a little bit of background if you are interested in these kind of courses but you find this a little too uh, light then in that case there is a more comprehensive course that I have online on simulating power electronic circuits and you can check it out on Udemy the link for this course is provided in the description of this video of this video and it covers more or less most of the concepts of simulation and also some basic theory along with a complete example of simulating a buck converter. And of course, if you are also interested in this kind of simulations, but you do not have the time to either watch or go through a course, you can download the simulation packages that I provide. So all the simulations that I do are compressed as zip files that contain just the sim simple simulation files and are uploaded to this account where you can just download them. So the link for this is also provided in the description for this video. So now to continue with this course. Now, in the previous lecture, I had done an open loop simulation of this converter. So, let us just jump over to my editor where I have the control code. So, in the control code, you will see that I had set the modulation signal to 0.7. Right? This is just an arbitrary number. Now, in this lecture, I am going to bring in an open loop control strategy. So, the open loop control strategy is similar to what I have done with the buck converter and the boost converter. So, basically, it is just that I am increasing the modulation signal or rather the duty ratio from almost close to 0 all the way to some value like 0.8 gradually over time and you can now examine what happens because of this. All right? So, let me go and copy this file from another simulation. So, let me go over to the boost converter and let me copy open loop control dot the descriptor file as well as the python file and break it into the buck converter. With this, I have to just go and add this to my control files. So, I am going to add this file, make sure you are in the buck boost converter directory and pick out open loop control. And let us configure the control. To configure the control, all I have to do is upload the descriptor file which is this one and before this you see it is empty. Click on the upload button and now you see the variables have been populated. So, let us go back to actually let us go back to the view output and now that we are here all we have to do is link these two files together. So, now this file as I have already said it increases the modulation signal from 0 to some value like 0.8. It can you can of course change this and I am now creating a global variable called open loop con open open control modulation signal which contains this duty ratio or modulation signal. Now, this is a global variable which means it can be accessed in any control file of the simulation and that is what I am doing here. So, I just have to comment this line and uncomment this line. So, now you see modulation signal is equal to open loop control modulation signal. So, therefore, the global variable which I created in the other file is now being assigned to the duty ratio here. So, it is no longer hard coded. In reality, you will need something like a PI controller to be able to regulate your output voltage to a particular value that you choose. So, now that we have done this, let us go over and run this simulation. So, simulation is running, most importantly, let us go to the command line and check if there is an error, there is no error, so it is we are good to go. So, now let us plot the value, I just want to plot the output voltage, yeah, this is the output voltage, let us go over to the file browser and you see the output voltage is gradually changing. So, this will continue for a while. plot it again. You can plot this as many times as you want because every time you plot it, it overrides the earlier plot. So, you see it is increasing. So, in this manner, you will you can increase this 
to whatever value you want. I would suggest that go ahead, take this. If you are downloading this file or you are coding along with me, you can change this value to anything you want. You can even go all the way up to 0.99. However, it is not recommended to run a boost converter beyond a certain limit because you are increasing the stress on the switch and the inductor. That is more on the theory of buck and boost converters and also the same with also a simple boost converter. Typically, you do not boost the output voltage to a ratio of more than 3 with respect to the input voltage. That is usually a limit which is observed with respect to these converters. So, let me go and just close this and do it one last time in the hope that it has settled. This is still not a long simulation so I am actually plotting it over and over again. In future lectures when simulations get long, I will have to probably pause it and come back. So, you see the, it has settled. Right? So, you see it is gradually increasing and at around 0.1 seconds, it is settling to the final value and this is when duty ratio probably reaches 0.8 which is what we had set. So, you see this is the gradual increase. For values of D which are small, right? this works as a buck converter. The buck boost converter works in buck mode which is when the output voltage is lesser in magnitude than the input voltage. right? And when D is greater than a certain value, typically more than around 0.5 or so, that is when the buck boost converter works in boost mode and the output voltage is greater in magnitude than the input voltage. Remember, the input voltage is just 12 volts. So, that is where our input voltage is. So, this is the cutoff line, right? Somewhere here. Below this, it is in buck mode and above this, it is in buck boost mode or other boost mode, sorry. So, now that we have done this, we can just plot some of the other values. Actually, let me just go and see which range I should plot. So, let me pick out the range of 0 0.15 to 0 0.1501. So, let me come over. Yeah, okay. Let me pick out the inductor value. So, this is 0 0.15 to 0 0.151. Let me plot this. And this is a new input current. You see these are the values and it is pretty similar to what we did before because the input current will rise when the induct, when the car, when the switch is turned on and this is when the inductor charges and the input will turn off or rather the, the current through the switch will turn off when the switch is turned off and this is when the inductor is freewheeling through the doubt. And the reason you see here that this pulse is so high is because this is when the duty ratio is high. This is when the duty ratio is 0.8 which means the switch is turned on for 80 percent of the time of a switching time period. This is why the current is rising for such a large time through this, through this diode. Now, let me go and quickly plot the others. And you see this is also the inductor current. The inductor current is continuous because we have a fairly large load. The inductor current rises when the switch is turned on and it falls when the switch is turned off. It falls when it is freewheeling through the diode. Now let's plot the diode current. and this is the diode current and you see the diode current is the thin pulse where this switch is turned off. Now, I am going to recreate one of the plots I created before because it is not totally obvious. This is the comparative plot. The reason is because I had not given it a scale and I had actually left it as an exercise but in this lecture I am going to actually do it. I am going to give it a scale. So, let us call this a comparative plot. Right? You can think of a better name if you really have to. So, First, let us start with the input current and let us call it in and this let us give it a scaling factor of 1. Let us save this waveform. Next comes the inductor current. Let us call this I L. Now here, let us give it a small scaling factor. Why? Because you want to differentiate the currents. As you said, in the previous lecture, we had compared these three currents and we found that there was actually a superimposition which made it very difficult for us to figure out when which current is actually flowing. So, let us give it a small 
scaling factor of 5 percent right so this current is actually magnified by a 5 percent value as compared to its original value so let's save the waveform and the last is the diode current let's call this id and let's give it a 10 percent scaling factor over this right so we are just scaling the currents one over the other and with this we are done and all the way below you see this is a comparator plot so let's plot this for the same range The reason why the computer is busy is because simulation is actually running. So, let me just stop it and we should see, yeah, this is our comparative plot. So, here you see, you actually see a difference and the difference is because of the scaling, but it is quite interesting to note what is actually going on. So, let us look. The blue current is the input current and that is this one, all right. The orange current is the inductor current that is above this and the green current is the diode current which is way above. All right. So, you see the blue the blue current and the orange current are actually the same. The reason why they are different is because this orange current has been given a 5 percent scaling factor. Actually, they were superimposed and if you do, if you can actually compare this with the previous plot, in the previous plot these two were superimposed. But what this shows is when the switch is turned on, the current through the inductor flows through the switch and it increases because it is charging the inductor. All right, the inductor current is also increasing, which means the inductor is getting charged. All right. Now, when the switch is turned off, the blue current falls to zero. Well, here unfortunately you can't see it because you can't avoid completely all superimposition, but you see here the blue current vanishes, it does not flow anymore, which means it's actually zero. And here instead the green current appears. And you see the orange current and the green current seem parallel to each other. The reason why they are parallel is because the orange current or rather the inductor current is scaled by 5 percent with respect to the input current and the diode current is scaled by 10 percent with respect to the input current. So, really speaking this orange current and this green current are the same, they have the same value. The reason why they appear different is because we have scaled them in this plot. But you see that when the diode is conducting and this is when the switch is turned off the current through the inductor flows through the diode. So, the inductor current is falling and that current that current appears exactly through the diode all right and this is when un this happens until the switch is turned back on. This is when the inductor current continues to flow back through the switch and stops flowing through the diode. This is when the diode current flows to zero. You see the diode current discontinues. So, this shows the actual transfer of current from one component to another in a buck in a buck boost converter and you can do this for any converter. So, with this we have more or less done. All we have to do is go back and export our files. This is something which I always like to do when I wind up any simulation. So, all I have to do is click on export parameters and export parameters will give me the latest bug post parameters. And also with respect to control, I will just go and export these two control files. When you export a control file, it creates this descriptor file, right? Now, of course, we already had a descriptor file, but the advantage is when you do this, you are exporting the latest parameters of your control file. So, let me click on this again and that is it, it is done. So, with this, we have backed up our simulation and we have analyzed the open loop control strategy. So, let me just go and end with this plot. This is how you would typically regulate the output voltage or the buck boost converter to any value that you want. Really speaking, you will be using a PI controller or a proportion resonant controller or a dead beat controller. There are several several types of control. This is the reason why I do not talk about control because control is such a huge topic and it is really up to you what kind of control you want to implement. But the concept of implementing control is similar to what I have done here. You have a separate file where you implement your PI controller or any other form of controller and you assign it to a global variable and in your pulse width modulation file, you 
assign that global variable to your duty ratio so that you can perform PWM. So, with this, I am going to end this lecture. These files will also be uploaded to the Gumroad account. So, if and I will be providing the link in the next lecture if you want to download them. In the meantime, if you have any doubts or you want to ask any other questions or you want to just even email or something else, you can comment on this video or you can just email me or message me on social media or anything else that you prefer. In the next week, I will start with another DC DC converter, most probably the Chuk converter, but it could also be the SEPIC. Anyway, I'll decide that. So, thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye for now.